you popped off. You popped off. You did the, the FA part of the FAFO. Unfortunately, for the sake of GCW, everyone's finding out. And not a good way, dude. You can't say that stuff, Effie. <laughs> All right, let's get in the news. Uh, Sean Rassep at Fightful, they had their Wednesday news show. I'm sure it's going to be chock full of stuff. It's Fightful's The Hump with uh, Jimmy Van and Sean Rossap. Fightful.com. Yeah, yeah. What's up, you guys? Welcome to Fightful. Sean Rossap here. It's The Hump for November 27th, 2024. We have some big Fightful Select stories to talk about today. Uh, I mean, it was Ricky Starks Day yesterday, and boy, do we have an awful lot of Ricky Starks stuff to talk about. Uh, we were at the forefront of this story from quite literally every angle. I've got a lot of insight on this that uh, that is not out there as of yet. So, uh, you want to get into the Ricky Starks? Yeah, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to get oh, into this. Also, there's, there's this. There's this. Oh, thanks for putting that up after my pitch. I appreciate it. So like yeah, I had to watch the rest of the uh, Ricky Starks interview first to figure out, you know, what's Ricky's side of the story. Like I said, storysalesmid.com. It's available online now wherever books are sold. Check out our Twitter for the giveaway at storysalesman.com. Or not storysalesman.com, it's Twitter, just at storysalesman. And uh and I hope people like it. I hope yeah, they like it. Um it is good, it's very good. Uh but Jimmy, I'm I'm interested in your your business acumen and and feelings on yeah it's a great interview what the hell happened yesterday so oh boy how how do i even start jimmy i was sitting yep. down to have a nice dinner okay and i get a phone call from someone at gcw and they're like ricky starks got pulled from our show or they said shows uh and i said shows he's on one show and they're like nope we were going to have him wrestle uh, twice next month as well, or, or twice more, including Hammerstein. Yep. Uh, and I said, oh boy, well, a lot had happened over the last four days. So for those that didn't know, Ricky Starks, who has not been on AEW TV since March, when he, I believe, suffered a stinger, which was okay, he was okay immediately. And there were some people that felt some way about that, because there were a lot of people that knew that he didn't want to team with Big Bill anymore. He was never really that that like high on doing a team, but he did it. Um, he had months before that, let AEW know, I would like to basically wanted them. To, it was the Josh Alexander thing. Wanted them to not pick up his option so he could explore the open market. And I believe he let them know this well ahead of time. And they were, you know, baffled because they, they had him in a program with punk around that time. He had a great match with Brian and, then what they did was they picked up his option, which normally you know, I wouldn't have a problem with. You, you, you've got people for this contracted amount of time. However, subsequently, he has not been used. He has not been featured. He has not been injured. And to me, that just seems spiteful. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with Sean here. It's the same thing I disliked about uh, what they did uh, with Brody when he was over in WWE and they kept him as on as Luke Harper. And then they were like, didn't do anything with him for any amount of time. And, you know, obviously Brody passed and we got less time with him. And this is, I understand this. We don't know what's going to happen with Ricky Starks. Heaven forbid something happened to him like that, but life's too short, man. You're not using these guys. Send them out. Uh, not to ruin. Uh, I'll make sure to, to mention when it's my opinion, as opposed to objective news, but they did, pick up that option and his deal goes through uh, part of next year. FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business, broke that news yesterday. But he cuts this promo at GCW and it was a great, great spot. I don't know if you saw it, but they did a show in a mall and they show him coming down the escalator of the mall with a Louis Vuitton bag. Like he just happened to be there shopping. First yeah. off, I respect the fact that he found a way to make that Louis Vuitton purchase tax deductible. Respect to you, Ricky Starks. Pop. I really like that. Uh, but he said that he's been frozen out, uh, it, which is accurate. He has been, uh, he's been willing to go to work. There's a lot of people that look at the Dan Housen thing, the Ricky Starks thing. And they, they're like, well, wh why aren't they coming to work? They work there. If Tony Khan tells them to come to work, they're coming to work. That's, mm -hmm. that's the long and short of it. 
and we'll compare and contrast all these different situations. But then he's backstage at AEW that night. We broke that story as well. Danny Cage had even mentioned it on his Instagram. Danny Cage of Monster Factory. I heard he got along with everybody there. And then uh, I broke the news about his contract. And that same day, he had a an hour-long plus interview with Chris Van Vliet. And listen, when you do... If Chris Van Vliet farts into a tuba, it's gonna get, it's gonna go viral. I mean, obviously that's gonna go viral, but anybody he talks to is gonna go viral because his he's done such a great job with that platform. And Ricky is an interesting figure. It'd probably be such a respectful fart too. It would be. It'd definitely be a handsome one. It'd be the kindest <laughs> fart into a tuba you have ever heard. That Pixar dad looking piece of shit. <laughs> I, just to clarify, I'm joking because he's he's such a nice guy. He might be like, what, what did I do? <laughs> but um, R- Ricky Stark's interview goes crazy. You know it's going crazy. By the way, guys, send in your Super Chats, Humper Chats. I forgot to mention that. Um, get your questions or statements read on the air, HumperChats.com. Sorry, I digress. So, man. I get the call. Ricky's been pulled and immediately I thought, well, they're probably mad about the promo or something he said in the interview. So I run the story. GCW quickly confirms it obviously came from within the company, got a good relationship there. And then I get a call from, uh, I'll say AEW and it is straight up like, okay, you want to know why? Cause I had, I had already inquired why uh, they said, look at what Effie said about Tony Khan's father. And nothing like that had hit my radar, which made me be like, well, are, is our team sleeping on the job? Like, what's going on? But I know Jeremy Lambert ain't sleeping on the job because Jeremy Lambert never sleeps on the job. So I asked him and he goes, well, here's the only thing that I remember hearing. And it was, he said it was so unremarkable, didn't even bother transcribing it. And I was like, there's, there's got to be something else. So I call Effie. <laughs> and I met with a, hello? <laughs> Cause like, I've not talked to Effie since we had our match. And I'm like, what, what'd you say? And he's like, I don't really think anything. And he was <laughs> dude, he's like, Oh my God, I feel so bad for it. Like, obviously like that's a dumb thing to say. Like Effie said something to the extent of like Tony Khan's father gives him money to do AEW. So it keeps Tony and Khan away from him and not like bothering him. Right. Kind of like an offhanded comment. And like, um, okay yeah disrespectful it's not nice to say don't comment on maybe he's maybe tony's got like dad issues maybe he just like really likes his dad and he's like that's not true i'm not it is disrespectful though because effie is kind of like a face of gcw he is widely like considered like when you think of f we think of like people who work at gcw effie's one of them so it's like matt cardona and obviously like nick gage right um James and Jesse, Effie seems good, but he's got an effing attitude. Uh, yeah, I think he's just kind of being like catty, which is fine. Like we're all like that sometimes, but most of the time you don't do that with like a microphone and a camera in your face. And in this case, he did right. He was looking and he found the clip and it was the clip was from his weekend at Effie's show. Have him describe it here where he said where they were talking. He and somebody were talking about a W running Hammerstein ballroom. That's right. And he had said. Something along the lines. I got the quote, uh, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Please run the quote. Yeah. So he said, now we should, we should note, like you just said, I don't believe that Effie intentionally went in looking to take shots. I think that he was just kind of spitballing because he was frustrated about. So GCW booked Hammerstein first, uh, and then AEW announced three dates coming right after. And so he was just frustrated as a talent. And, uh, and so I don't think he was. I don't think he meant ill will, but this is what he said. He said, AEW has no buzz, no draw. He said, GCW can't run on a $40 million deficit and continue to run shows. But some of us have the privilege of being able to run at a $40 million deficit. And he said, Brett, meaning Brett Lauderdale, the promoter of GCW, doesn't have a dad who pays him to stay away. Damn. Yes. That is correct. And that. Damn, dude. Yeah, bro. You went, you popped off. You popped off. You did the uh, F.O. Now it's uh, time to find out. Or sorry, 
uh, you did the uh, FA rather. You did the FA part of the FAFO, and now, unfortunately, for the sake of GCW, everyone's finding out. And not a good way, dude. You can't say that stuff, Effie. Like, okay, you want to feel it, keep it an inside thought, right? So that, that's probably the problem with the internet nowadays. A lot of people, the internet has given, what was the quote from Clerks? The internet has given the people a voice and those, and they decide to use those voice to complain about wrestling. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. They were talking about movies, but dude, you can't, you can't say that. Like, it's not, yeah, this stuff isn't not, it's, it's not like it's going to go unnoticed, Right. It's yeah, clerks too. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's it's not that it's not gonna it's not gonna be. Un- it was a Jane Silent Bob. No, I think it was Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. They're in the movies. Uh, anyways, um, dude, people are gonna find that. Do you know how many drama farmers there are in the pro wrestling space? If you say something negative about like, especially about AEW, they're gonna post it everywhere because they want that interaction, baby. Like you can't you. Big Demo said it best. I don't know what to tell you, man. Some wrestlers are just stupid. And this was a stupid thing to do. That is the comment that was effectively given as the reason. Yeah, it's also personal. You're right, James. Ricky being pulled. I was told by AEW that Ricky can still work other indies. Um, I know Effie was uh, listen, a little defiant, but also like I can't believe of all the things. That's the thing. Um, listen, that it. Got to be real. If you're Effie, you're probably like, well, this is probably good for my career. Uh, GCW, this is the biggest commercial for their shows that, you know, tickets weren't moving as fast as I'm sure they would like. It's a giant commercial for them. Unfortunately, you lose Ricky Starks, who understandably a little frustrated by this. But Brett, I know, and and Brett did a show with Body Slam that I want to shout out because uh, they did a full interview with him immediately. And uh, it, it's the Game Changer Weekly podcast. They they did an immediate thing where they, he talked about his relationship or lack thereof with Tony Khan. And that is true. Like, they have met one time at a UFC show in Jacksonville very briefly. Um, I can tell you, Brett told me some something so nice that Tony Khan did for a GCW talent that is one of many similar things that I have heard that Tony Khan has done for talent. And... Um, like a thing that he absolutely did not have to do. But Brett looked at that and said, you know, I thought considering some of that, like maybe things were, you know, a little bit better or or maybe on the up and up, but they have never talked. He, you know, was hoping to extend an olive branch and be like, hey, listen, this isn't Effie show. If it was like big gay brunch or something, like maybe – you could at least point the finger, but Effie is a talent on that show. Yeah. Um, I, I want to try to separate <laughs> my opinion from the factual news reporting because here are the facts as presented. Ricky had that week, cut that promo, appeared backstage at GCW. I broke the story about his contract. He did the interview with Chris Van Vliet where he spoke candidly about his, his AEW absence and said that he wants to be on TV. That night, he is removed from upcoming GCW appearances. I'm told by AEW it was because of the Effie comments, and their line of thinking was, okay, you're saying that he's paid to go away. We're not going to pay him, pay this guy to show up on your show then. And then everything that is... Right, that's the thing a lot of people don't understand is, is AEW still paying Ricky Starks? Like, when he goes to these other events, like, he's got that guaranteed money. Like, he is an, uh, an independent contractor of the company. Which, in AEW terms, they're actually independent contractors and can't go work other places. But AEW, like, that is a huge, like, he, so Ricky Starks, I don't know if you're aware of any indie, any talent from AEW who wants to go do indie booking, indie bookings has to bring that to the office of AEW and say, yo, can I go do these bookings? AEW says yes or no, whatever, whatever. GCW, if you're unfamiliar, is Game Changer Wrestling, is a smaller independent promotion. I just went to GCW show like two weeks ago. Had a great time. Um, but Effie is one of their wrestlers. And um, when one of your wrestlers, who probably has one of the bigger, we'll say media draws of, of, of people in your thing. I mean, obviously, he's no uh, he's no Matt Cardona, if you will. 
But Effie is, is very important to GCW. Now, when Ricky Starks comes to that mall, the show they did at the mall, which I think is an amazing setup. I think it's a great, I think a great place for wrestling, to be honest with you. I just want to say, though, that Ricky Starks brought a lot of eyes to GCW because Ricky Starks does have a very passionate fan base of people who want to see him wrestle. And he hasn't wrestled on TV in a long time. So seeing Ricky Starks come to this promotion and possibly have a match, getting ready to have a match with Matt Cardona, dude, people were excited. People were going to tune in. That was probably going to sell some tickets. That was probably going to sell some pay-per-views. Now, not so much. They pulled it every they pulled everything. And it's not like they're it's not like AEW's angry with Ricky Starks for going to GCW. It seems like Tony Khan's mad with Effie or AEW's mad with Effie for the comments being made. Because he can still go work other places, which is good. That's the way it should be. Um, but yeah, I think AEW it was trying to not like in spite of themselves trying to help GCW, but I think the AEW's like, yeah, okay, go for it. We don't have any heat. But like Sometimes when you talk about stuff and you say the wrong thing, you hurt relationships. This is one of those instances. It's unfolded since, and Ricky is allowed to work other indies. So those are the facts as presented, and I want your thoughts on it, and then I'll offer my thoughts because uh, this is what a, what, a, what a wild situation. I don't know whether to call it peculiar or unfortunate or whatever. It's a wild situation is what it is. Yeah, I mean, obviously, given the timing, uh, given the fact that the AEW decision was made yesterday, the day that the Chris Van Vliet interview came out, the day that you announced the terms of Ricky's contract in terms of when it's, when it's expiring, the fact that it came out yesterday when the Effie podcast was like a week and a half ago, I can understand. But I mean, Jimmy, how many, I'll say this, sorry to cut you off. How many times have you not been aware? You asked me about a situation personally that happened with me uh, two months ago yesterday. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, you, yeah, so yeah. you weren't aware of that as well. No, no. Like I, I see both sides of it. I see both sides. What yeah. I'm saying is like I saw a lot of fan backlash online against Tony Khan and against AEW because of the timing, right? Of, yeah. of the interview dropping and all that stuff. And, and then he's cut from the shows. But I see both sides of it. And, and so I want to kind of explain both sides. So on the one hand, like you said, it, it looks like it, it, you know, might be spiteful. Uh, the optics aren't the greatest. Like I said, the Effie podcast came out over a week ago. And since the Effie podcast came out, Moxley was on GCW, Rena Shafir, MVP. They were on GCW on Sunday. Watch on the chat saying, obviously Ricky is going to get good publicity for the Chris Van Vliet interview. Why not capitalize off of that? I mean, yeah, I think that the whole idea was that we were going to capitalize and help GCW in that sense. Um, at least that was going to be the unintended consequence. But for whatever reason, AEW does not want to put Ricky on television. But I do find it interesting, though, that but they approve his indie bookings. If they're a pen, uh, if they're if they're approving his indie bookings, right? I would assume that the heat is not so grand because if you were like really spiteful, right? Let's just say I'm going to put on my Booker hat and I'm mad. I'm mad at Ricky Starks because, I don't know, maybe Ricky Starks said something about Tony Khan's dad too. Maybe he went up to Tony Khan and said, your dad doesn't love you. And Tony Khan was like, ah, you know what? You've made a blood enemy now. I hate you forever. And maybe that was the case. I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, as we know, Tony Khan is apparently pretty sensitive about, not sensitive, right? I think, I don't think it's sensitive what he, why he pulled Ricky Starks from that. I think what Effie said was kind of messed up. Regardless, right? Um, if I was mad at Ricky Starks and I wanted to teach him a lesson for being friends with CM Punk or whatever the reason a million people say, right? I wouldn't, but I wouldn't let him go to the indie dates either. I would say, no, what, no, we're, 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 we're not going to approve those dates for you, <laughs> but they do. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not as serious. Um, but yeah, especially off the Chris Van Vliet interview, why not? Which was what we watched earlier today. Why not bring him back and say, yo, Let's uh let's try to figure something out. I think they should. I think AEW should. If they can't, uh, Tony has the right to. Yeah, Tony has the right to not book anybody he doesn't want to book for sure. And he may have his reasons, and maybe we'll learn those reasons. But uh, the Chris Van Vliet interview is going to do some numbers, like Sean said earlier. There, Chris Van Vliet can fart into a tuba and we get a million views. Day, but um, but like you said, so it's possible on. Tony didn't hear about the podcast. I I'll admit, Sean, I wasn't aware of the Effie podcast until yesterday. 
Yeah, I wasn't either. I mean, and, I and, knew that he had a podcast, but right. Yeah. But that particular one, I wasn't aware of it until yesterday. And Tony's a busy guy, so it's possible that he didn't hear about it uh, until yesterday. So it does come off timing. No, dog. I don't know if you know. Tony Khan seems chronically online, bro. He knows about it. He knew about it. He just was like, maybe just fuming a little bit. <laughs> I think Tony Khan is like in the squared circle. She might be in this chat right now. Why? Actually. Is like it's because of the Chris Van Vliet interview, but we don't know that for sure. But let me say this on the other hand. And I understand that Effie is not Brett Lauderdale. He's not the promoter of GCW, but Effie is a mainstay guy there, right? Yeah. GCW being able to have AEW talent on their shows, it's a privilege, not a right. Because the AEW talent is contracted to AEW. And so it's a privilege when you can have a Ricky Starks, a John Moxley, an MVP on your shows. I understand Effie being frustrated with the Hammerstein ballroom thing. Yeah. Um, but you got to be smarter than that because this yeah, is your other partner. People, like I said, I don't think Effie planned it out. I don't think he meant any harm. I think he was spitballing based on frustration. But if I'm Tony Khan and if I see a mainstay from this company that I'm giving my talent to, he didn't just say anything about his dad. He ripped the company because he made the comment yeah. about, he made the comment about they have no buzz. They have no draw. Uh, they can run 40 million, a uh, $40 million deficit. If I'm Tony Khan and I see that I'm yanking my talent. Like, I mean, I yeah. am, but the question is going to be, does it stop with Ricky Starks? Is Mox going to keep appearing? That's the big question. Like, right. If it, oh, if wow. I didn't even think about that, dude. Damn. Yeah, if Moxley's just there's like no Moxley's not coming anymore. That's gonna be a big that'll be a big loss to them for sure. Dude, there you go. It's a it's a double it's a double work. It's to get heat on GCW. So when John Moxley shows up as the heel champion at GCW, it's gonna be even more like they're going against Tony Khan. Damn it, Tony Khan. <laughs> Seven dimensional chess. That's what you've done. Booker of the year, as always. God, we just we were so blinded by the YouTube drama. That's exactly what's gonna happen. He's gonna. It's a work, baby. It's all a work, and we're just the marks living in the world. Damn it, they're gonna get us again. Talent isn't pulled, which I certainly don't want to encourage. Right. Well, it certainly seems like something pointed towards Ricky. Jonathan chat saying they called. They said ROH is basically AEW dark. You know what? That's not a nice thing to say. ROH has got its own champions its own uh, structure it's not very you know it's not a nice thing to say to the people who are using their time effort and energy to try to put on roh especially and right. I, I gotta say this like i there's a lot of people that are comparing a lot of situations you know there's danhausen there's penta there's phoenix there's Miro. Miro. there's there's yeah. a lot of people so uh, let me break down the differences in those because of everybody I know that there have been some people that had issues with Ricky Starks and say certain things about him in the company, people that I respect, but he's probably been on the best behavior of anybody with the Danhausen thing. He and Tony had a very spirited conversation last year, and there was definitely a situation where uh, they felt like he didn't want to work Saturdays because he wanted to work indie dates because he told them, Hey, I've got a family situation. I want to uh, handle that. And then he worked indies and he would be the first to tell you, I could see where that was misconstrued. Miro and AEW have not been on the same page creatively. There are plenty of people like, depending on which side you ask there that are like, well, he don't want to lose. Well, that's, that's part of the job. Penta. And Damn. Miro saying in Bulgarian, that doesn't work for me, brother. And Phoenix. Listen, man, Phoenix has injury time. That's worked into his contract. That's a condition of the contract. Extending that injury time and not using him, well, that's certainly frustrating. We broke news about Penta's contract this week as well in Fight for Select. His is way different because when you still have four or five months on your contract and you're actively telling people, yeah, I'm going to NX, or I'm going to WWE. I told them I wasn't going to go to NXT before, told them that me and my brother were a package deal, et cetera like AEW at least heard that Penta was doing, well, you can't expect them to take that lying down, you know? So a little bit different. Ricky Starks has not went out there and buried the company. He has not, I mean, I can tell you this sincerely. I have reached out to Ricky Starks like 15 different times about what's up with him, his contract. He ain't told me. It. He was so tight-lipped about it. Reps, tight-lipped. 
They don't. They didn't want anything emerging. They didn't want a reason, an excuse for AEW to hold anything against them. And this, him getting his option picked up and then not being used at all, and then right. this seems pretty pointed to me. Yeah, I agree with you. Now, I have a, a couple of questions I want to get your opinion on. Um, and a lot of this is based on, so I posted about something to Question, when you flat out say you're going to WWE, is that some kind of contract interference? I don't know. Uh, I'm not a contract lawyer, but I would like to say that I don't, you know, I don't think it is because they're independent contractors, right? If you're an independent contractor, you can go work other places. I mean, maybe it's something, maybe it says in the contract that you signed that you will not negotiate with other people. Then you're bringing up like breach of contract as issues, not exactly like the police aren't getting involved, right? There's nothing like the federal government is going to step in here, right? Unless it goes to court and it becomes a whole thing. So I, I don't think it's like there's anything wrong with it. I'm always pro worker. So like if you are negotiating for better pay for yourself at another company, by all means go for that dog. I'm, I am, um, I'm a hundred percent. Whatever is going to make the boys and the girls, the more money, I want that. Whatever's going to separate the owners of these billion dollar companies from their money and gets paid and it gets paid to the people actually putting their bodies on the line. I'm for it, dude. I can't, I'm never going to own the machine. So I'm going to side with the people working the machine. But Ricky Starks on Twitter, I didn't say his name. Uh, but what I basically said is if you're a wrestling promoter and if you have somebody under contract for a period of time that you don't intend to resign, wouldn't it be smarter to utilize them in order to elevate other talent as opposed to not using them at all? Because when their contract expires and they go somewhere else, say presumably NXT or WWE, wouldn't they be a bigger deal if they've been sitting out for a year as opposed to you've been using them to put over other talent first? So wouldn't it make more sense for you to utilize them to elevate other talent? So here's my here's my first question. Do you it's, think it's increasing a- the the like the lore of Ricky yes. Starks. Yes, yes, exactly. By not using him. Do you think there's a chance Starks was pulled because he's going to return to AEW television? If that was the case, they didn't relay that it to him yesterday or or at any time throughout this week. There were some people in AEW that were like, man, we should really use this and turn this into like a Matt Hardy 05 thing. Because how often do you get that that natural thing? Sorry, I mean, sometimes that's, my job to kind of put out that information, but there were definitely people that were like, okay, that could be the thing. If I were AEW and I lost CM Punk last fall and I lost Kenny Omega for a year in December, and then I lost sting in March. And then I lost Brian Danielson uh, a few months later, I would be wanting to put Ricky Starks on my show. I would be wanting as much star power as possible. And like, listen, I, it can't be that he is, I think Ricky Starks has some star power, but I do think that that was mainly produced by like AEW's doing. I'm not saying the man hasn't. I don't want to put this. The man has gotten several opportunities, and good for him has made the most out of those opportunities. Why he doesn't want to come back and maybe try to his hand at these other opportunities is kind of beyond me. Maybe he's picking and choosing. Maybe he saw like this one is not going to work for me or that's, you know, that's not going to be very helpful to what I want to do with my career. And maybe he's making those decisions. Maybe not, but there's no doubt in my mind that every time Ricky Stark has been on our televisions, he has had a chance to uh, make a breakout performance for himself. And I think he's done that. I think that he would be in the same position that someone like Kyle Fletcher is in now. I think Ricky Starks made the more made more of his opportunities than Kyle Fletcher has on television. But Kyle Fletcher was just sent into the stratosphere after that Will Ospreay win. And I think that uh, Ricky Starks was the same way. He could have been the next big thing. He was the he was up next, but it's not what he decided to do. I mean, allegedly, right? If he decided, you know, he wants to go to WWE, something happened. There has to be an answer of why he is not on television. And between him and Tony Khan, there is an answer. And I don't know. I mean, if I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm roughly the same. I'm a little bit younger than Ricky Starks. And I would go into my boss's office and I would ask him, I'd say, yo, what the f- is going on, dude? You need to let me know. Because like, 
you know, that's my thing. When Ricky's like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know if that is the case, man. I don't know these people, obviously, and this is just speculation. Maybe he doesn't want to say. Maybe he knows exactly why. And he's like, oh, it doesn't make me look good, so I'm going to say, I don't know. Could be the case. Could also just be the case he has not asked. If you have not asked your boss on why you're not getting booked, why you're not being on the television show that you're being paid for, you should probably call a meeting with Tony Khan. you be like, yo, can I get 10 minutes on your calendar? Talk to me. What the hell is going on? <sighs> but it seems like nobody has information. It's like some incredible headache that is impossible to deal with because there have been other incredible headaches. Like people, people negotiating things into their booking that should just be, no, you work here, you're doing this. Right. And this happens all over wrestling. It's not just AEW. But like, I'm, I'm baffled by this one. And I've, I, I even tried to mention to the person from AEW that I was talking to about this. Effie does not run that show. You're, you're hurting GCW for sure, but you're helping Effie by doing this. Like, e Effie? Yeah, mentioning his name, yeah. My God, this is... After I had a star-making performance with him, by the way, you are only helping this guy and increasing his visibility because he's going to be trending on Twitter after this. So I believe that Ricky Starks has addressed this. Uh, but again, I, I want to relay to you some of the stuff that people have asked me on Twitter. Um, he has the reputation of, of, of being difficult when it comes to creative. I believe Ricky Starks addressed that a while back and said that he did not refuse booking like a, like some particular booking have you heard of him having that reputation of being difficult when it comes to creative a couple people have claimed that um and you know there were there were people in the company that were like oh did he really have a stinger or did he just do that to to because i think he was they were supposed to win that match uh but there that that's there's a lot of political things at play with that because there were people that are like, oh, he turned. Sean knows something. He's not saying something. It feels like he's being very measured with his. Very measured with what he was saying. He, and this is the thing. This is wrestling journalism. So journalistic ethics and everything aside, like if you know something and you can say it, you should probably say it, dog. But, you know, wrestling's a weird business. And I imagine the journalism surrounding wrestling isn't completely odd business i did journalism back in college and it's different right I, working having so i did journalism back in college and also at the same time i was the director of ovw so i could see kind of i, I obviously don't have a hundred percent understanding because sean is in that line of business and i can only have two tangential like touches towards those businesses but yeah, it sounds like, yes, James is right in the chat. So it sounds like everyone knows what's up. Yeah, it does. It does. It sounds like people are just not saying it, though. Down creative. Which, like, at this point, if we're going to tiptoe around it, just say it. Just say it. Who cares? Bro, just say it. Just be like, you know, even if it's the case, right? Even if it's the case. Uh, Tony Khan's mad at uh, Ricky Stark, so he's being petty and um, is keeping him locked down to a contract because he has a blood feud with Ricky Starks. Just say it. You know? It's fine. No, that's not what we reported. Mm -hmm. We reported that he said, please don't have Big Bill lose to me. It will not help Big Bill. And I'm like, if, you, if you're shooting down the type of creative that is like, I don't want to win this match, that's, that's you know a pretty good problem to have there. Now, I'm not backstage. I don't hear everything. Mm -hmm. So when people say, oh, they're difficult to work with, et cetera, et cetera, I, I can only say what I hear. And yeah. So when I said on Twitter uh, that they should use him to elevate other talent while they've got him, one thing that a lot of people said to me is, what if Ricky refuses? Like, what if he refuses to put people over? And my he's answer not, to that he's is... He's not refusing to lose at anybody. As best right. I know, he's not refusing to come to work, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying if, if AEW went to him and said, oh, here's what's going to happen. We're going to bring you back to TV and you're going to, you know, work a match with this guy and you're going to put him over. You're going to work a match with this guy and you're going to put him over. And if Ricky was to say, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. People ask me on Twitter, well, what does AEW do? My answer is you cut him loose. You cut him loose. Yep, who, cares, who cares if he signs with WWE? You know what I mean? With, with all due respect to Ricky Stark, oh, he's not CM Punk. Not. You're not losing your biggest draw. So you bring him back to elevate your other talent. If he doesn't want to do it, you cut him loose. Like it's not, it's not the end of the world. And one other question I wanted to ask you, Sean, uh, and it was actually Ryan Satin that asked me this. 
I agree. He said, okay. he, I agree. Just let him go, dog. If you don't want him, let him go. Life's too short. I'll be honest. Like, get him off the books. Free up some pay. Do whatever you need to do. Just get him off the books. If you don't need him, go. See ya. He said, if you if you do this, if you bring him back to elevate other people, aren't fans going to complain you're burying him on TV? And my answer to him was, but people are already complaining because you're not using them. They're yeah. going to complain regardless. They're going to complain if you're not using them, and they're going to complain if you're burying them. And guess what, Sean? If you bring him back and put a belt on him, people are going to complain about that too. So yeah. don't don't worry about Ricky Starks. Worry about your company and worry about the, the talent that you plan to focus on. You've got, what, six months left, whatever it is on his contract. Bring him back. Have him elevate talent that you want to focus on. If you won't do it, you cut him. That's it. It's not, it's not that difficult. That's what you do. Yeah. This was... Dude, I'm saying, like, also, like, if you... If they're bringing him back to put people over and he refuses to put people over, I'm putting that out in the dirt sheets. I'm sorry. Like, no, you don't want to be professional. That's fine. Like, people need to know that you are not a professional act. You're not a professional wrestler, dog. Like... I'm sorry, if you refuse to lose, you're not a professional. Same thing with Miro. If Miro is refusing to lose, you're not being a professional, dog. Everybody loses. Like, it's just part of it. Because, uh, I mean, there, there's just so much here that I, I'm just like, man, wish this would have went a, a way different way. Now, Now, I know that Effie's line of thinking here is... Exactly, he's okay, not the well, Hulkster. When we ran center stage we had or when tna ran center stage and we wanted to run it there was a 30 day period before and after where we couldn't run because of competition but right. then AEW stepped in and ran hammerstein right and like listen i like effie a lot but it's like okay well why didn't gcw enact that that's exactly that's what effie one, said that, yeah that's what he said he said we should have had it in the contract they should have she should have should have had it yeah dog that's not AEW's fault talk to brett about that but you cost brett money not a good thing. Can't be mad about people running that. Man, on the shindy level, when I was having my first matches, we ran into people in Portsmouth, Ohio, that got mad that we were running the same town as them. Right. So this is prevalent along all levels of wrestling. But right. they didn't What's have up, that. AEW was going to run Hammerstein anyway. It wasn't like they looked at GCW and said, well, now we got to run Hammerstein. Um, it's It's... It's wild. Uh, let's hear from our sponsors real quick. We'll get back and answer some super chats and humper chats. Buying pay per views on NordVPN. Make sure you use uh, Fightful, NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Thanks for the uh, content, boys. Uh, I used to work a long time ago on the indies. This is normal. Yeah, it is. It's like, okay, so I worked at OVW, and OVW was incredibly weird when it came to like other promotions. They wouldn't want you to go to like other promotions and be seen there or like I so like I went and took pictures at an IWA show. Um, it was one of the deathmatch shows and it was a good time. I, I wanted to go take pictures. I'd never been and I got heat a little bit of heat, not a lot, because when I explained it to him, I was like, that's pretty dumb because someone was like, I saw you post the IWA photos and I was like, yeah, dog, I'm the director. I'm backstage. I'm never seen on television. OK, I was on like one pre tape. But, like, I, nobody knows me. Don't, like, I'm not your champ. Let's not do this. But they were, they were very, they were very uh, picky. And we would get, they would get upset when, when you would watch other wrestling, not let alone run wrestling in the same town. Like, there was no other Louisville Indies for the longest time. And they would, like, they would really, like, we had the commission here. So, like, the commission was boys with OVW. So we didn't really, uh, we did get some trouble, but. You know, we get smoothed over. <laughs> Make sure you guys check that out, guys. Very happy to working with Nord, work with NordVPN uh, throughout the remainder of the year and into next year. Uh, we've got the Fightful Awards presented by NordVPN. Wow! Very, very excited for that. Let's answer some of these super chats and humper chats. Some of which uh, are are about this. Uh, Bear Hudson says, thank you, Sean Ross Sapp, helping me navigate this emotional journey as my dad faces heart failure. Your openness about your grandmother's experience and that process has been incredibly comforting. Being open is not easy. Listen, man, uh, I, I existed in a situation that not only took my grandmother from me, but took two of the people that I was closest to for the majority of my life away from me because of how they acted throughout this situation. So, 
man, approaching that with, with the right demeanor is very important for yourself and your family. And, and I hope you're, you know, hope you're doing okay for sure. I want to, I want to chip in one thing. Uh, so, uh, people that follow this podcast will know this when I lost my father and my sister, I put together documentaries on both of them. Nothing fancy. I, but we basically, we brought together their family and their friends. We interviewed them all. We had them all talk about them. And, uh, if you have the ability, even using your, your cell phone camera, because they're, they're pretty high quality now, you should look at doing something like that. It really helped me kind of deal with the grief that I was dealing with at the time. And in the case of my dad, I was able to show him the footage before he passed. So, uh, just something I wanted to throw out there. Early predictions for the women's IC and the UC and our U S inaugural champions. I think Nat Natalia should be the IC champion because of the history with her family. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I own us. It's gotta be Michin or Chelsea green. In my opinion, if not, you know, somebody like a, a main event name, I think it should be one of them, Jimmy. I completely agree. So I, I actually posted on Twitter yesterday that I thought Natty should be the first intercontinental women's intercontinental champion because of the lineage, you know, Bret Hart, two time IC champion. You can't believe that they're doing women's mid card titles, James. Why not? Owen Hart, two time IC champion, Davy Boy Smith, former champion. Ironically, the only one who didn't win it was her dad, Sean, Jim, the yeah. Nightheart. But uh, I feel like Natty should be the first one. And uh, I had people on Twitter say to me, well, that's a bad pick because she's not on TV and she's not over. That's an easy story to tell. You can get her over. James says they have a title for every six women. <laughs> Dude, I don't care. I don't care. Titles are cool. Dude, when people were complaining about AEW having too many titles, I was like, yeah, dude, but they're cool. They're cool. They're cool. They do have a lot of women's titles, though, but that's fine by me. Wrestling belts are cool. We're in a week telling that story and utilizing that footage and bring Bret Hart out there if you want. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. can tell that story. I think Natty deserves it. I would make her the first Intercontinental Champion. And I also agree with you about Chelsea Green. Uh, Chelsea Green, I think, has been one of the un uh, unsung. Yeah, dude, I wish. Yeah, James, I'm with you. Also, the women fight over about the men and over the titles. Dude, I, I so wish that they would have a women's storyline that passes the Bechtel test. Dude, uh, the fact that Dominic Mysterio is, like, a prop in the top women's story is, like, come on, man. Like, we don't need this. We don't need this love triangle. I know a lot of people are in. There are some people who are into it, but these women are better than they're the women, the women and the characters they portray on television should be better than let's fight over a boy. Like that should not be a six month storyline. I'm sorry. I like this boy and this boy likes you and we used to date and now this boy dates you. And now like, that's the story that's it's, it's played out. I just don't care about it at all. I just, I truly don't. I do not care a single thing what they're doing with the Raw Women's, uh, with the doing the or the War, Women's World Heavyweight Championship. I just, I could not care less. Some heroes. I could not care more in WWE. Rather. I think she is everything they give She's her. Incredible. She, you know what, you know what she said one time. She did an interview. It might have been with Fightful. She did an interview where she said, "Capitalize on every minute of TV they give you." That's what yeah. she said. She's knocked it out of the park, and so I think Chelsea deserves the U.S. title on the other brand. Those would be my picks. Happy hey. Thanksgiving, Sean, and happy early Thursday. Jimmy with Denise gone. Will SRS tell us uh, what who is his new favorite, or will there be a contenders tournament? This person always asks me who my favorite is at Fightful. Um, I'll say that my favorite is now Ibu, who is joining me every Monday <laughs> Nice for the Fightful post show. Why is Tony Khan not threatened to sue talent refusing to work? I don't know if there's anybody refusing to work. That's the thing. Refusing to work. Tony Khan and AEW have had a, a long history of not using people for an extended period of time. That is one of my main criticisms of that company is they just park people. And in many cases, they do park people. But I want to mention this, right? WWE and AEW have roughly the same roster sizes with the same amount of television time weekly on television. Actually, now they have the same because we're all cut down to an hour less. They're going to get more time when they go three hour SmackDown, three hour Raw. Now, having said that, there are a lot of time. There are a lot of people on the WWE roster who are not used on television. The thing is, you just don't care about them. 
that's why you're not mentioning them. AEW has a lot more fan favorites. Have Their mid card is stacked with people that have a dedicated fan base. No one's really complaining that Angel Garza isn't on television or in any meaningful storylines anymore because you're kind of like, yeah, whatever, like, fine. But like when the House of Black isn't on TV or Malachi Black specifically is not on television for, you know, a couple of weeks, people freak out and they're like, he's leaving the company because you care a lot about them pretty simple i just like i that's the i've always i don't know if i'm ahead of the game on that take but like just look at the two look at the look at the mid card and you're gonna find people you're gonna find people with huge fan bases rabid fan bases in AEW. when you look at the mid card of wwe you're gonna find people who are like you're like oh okay cool like the Miz, dog. There's no one gonna be clamoring to put the Miz on television, but like there'll be people who complain when you know Miro isn't on TV or when Malachi isn't on television. It's like Ray Phoenix and Penta, like they were out there negotiating a deal elsewhere months before. We're not talking about like weeks ahead of their contract. We're talking about word that they had been negotiating deals well before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know if that's the case at all. Should Shinsuke beat Knight? I say yes. What about you guys? Um, yeah, if they have re-upped him for a long time, let's give this new edition of uh, of LA Na- or Shinsuke Nakamura a shot. What do you think, Jimmy? So LA Knight was on my my list today, and I want to ask your thoughts on it, and then we'll and then we'll address Shinsuke. So Booker T on his Hall of Fame podcast recently, he said, "Seems like that star has dimmed a little bit regarding LA Knight." And I agree with Booker, but not because of anything LA Knight has done or hasn't done. I think it's because of his booking. Because yeah. if you look at who they've had him in the ring with, he did a program with Andrade and Carmelo. And with all due respect to those guys, they're not exactly the most over guys on the roster. He defended the title on SmackDown recently against Birdo, who's rarely on television, especially in a singles match. And Shinsuke has lost every major feud he's been in. Seems like forever. And, and this is your next challenger. I think LA Knight's been handed a, a pile of sh- creatively and, uh, and it's affected him. In terms of Shinsuke, you got to build him, Sean, because I feel like if Shinsuke beats LA Knight, you're just hurting LA Knight because Shinsuke's lost every major program he's had for at least the last year. So now, did, yeah. did I, you say that they re up Shinsuke? I, I, bo- I mean, listen, that isn't for reporting. It wouldn't surprise me. Okay. I, I would believe that they have. I like his look. Um, his- he's got with the face paint and everything it's cool i i asked wwe directly and they they have not <laughs> responded right okay um they got to build them because again you beat la Knight when he hasn't been around and he keeps losing and you're just gonna hurt la Knight. yeah have you heard of J- jade bianca losing the belts i haven't i mean bianca seems to be or jade seems to be out for a while what i would do to baby face jade is have them say okay well you got to vacate the titles and she's like and I'll defend them myself. And yes. then two on Bianca, one over Bianca, you mean, right? Yeah. Bianca takes over and says, I'm going to do it. And then you eventually have her like, you know, not be able to overcome the odds. I think that's a easy story to tell. And you get Bianca over as like the fighting baby face champion who is going to do whatever they can. You do the exact same thing that AEW did with MJF, but like, <laughs> Except Bianca Belair is like not disingenuous about it. Bianca, yes, Bianca. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so tell us first what you've heard about Jade. So uh Fifa Select reported that the angle on TV was done to cover up a legitimate injury. Have you heard any more about that? Uh yeah, it is. Uh, I don't know the severity. I know some people have reported months. I've asked. I have not been told. I've just been told it is a a legit injury. We wish her the best. I love interviewing Jade. Um, Such she was. She was an honorary Lexingtonian, Jimmy. Uh, I am. Do you know who her? I think husband Brandon Phillips is. Yeah, I. I, You've told me like baseball player. You told me baseball baseball legend. Loved baseball so much he bought a minor league team just to play for it. (laughs) <laughs> here in lexington interesting. interesting it was fantastic it was fantastic but uh wishing her the best for well, sure well the one the one positive coming out of this is that they're going to do a whodunit story on television or- yeah poor jay dog i you know um they said it could be months until she comes back and you know in that time she's gonna heal obviously maybe they maybe when she comes back they work with her a little more in ring 
Um, I know that she, like she was saying that the, the grind was a little much for WWE, you know, uh, they work a little more than the AEW folks. And that is something you have to consider. Like if you're Ricky Starks and you're deciding, you know, Hey, what do I want to do? Like, I, I, I know that a lot of people are going to say, well, triple H and, and the grind and all that stuff. Like he was talking about, uh, in regards to Will Ospreay or not Will Ospreay that some people say. But dude, it's hard for me as a working professional to say, do I want to work seven days, do I want to work six days a week and make X amount of money? Or do I want to work one day a week and make comparable money? And I know there are going to be people, but people out there who's like, oh, the grind set, dog. You got you to gotta work all those days for all that money. No, man. Make that money. Make that money. If you can make all your money working one, working one day a week, good. Remember, you were not put on this earth to make profit for a corporation. You're supposed to make your money and live your life. So hopefully Jade can get a little R&R. Hopefully she can heal up. And then maybe we'll be better when she comes back. Regarding who yeah. attacked her. And it, it seems like there's three obvious candidates one is charlotte flair i think one is naomi and the other is bianca belair who's your pick dog if it's charlotte flair somebody would have saw her walking around right she kind of sticks out <sighs> mm. it's hard for me to go against bianca on like anything bianca i think would be so naomi i saw naomi was having fun online with people that said it was her and she was kind of having fun with that online. And even uh, Nia Jax was like, oh, yeah, it was definitely Naomi. It was definitely Naomi, which tells me that's not Naomi. Yeah. But, uh, I think Bianca Well, I mean, listen, I, I I think that in this, like, it would be enough. So here, here's why I said Bianca in, in that. It's hard for me to go against Bianca on anything, like, resembling a push. One, it, it takes Jade out for however long. She had the face off Bianca with Rhea right? That's clearly a WrestleMania main event level thing, but Rhea is massively over here. Mm -hmm. We have seen it and been through it with the Bianca baby face run. Yeah. Uh, James, I'm with you. I like what Jade's been doing, but she hasn't really gotten off the ground. And, and yeah, maybe she was on the cusp of it. Maybe it was, it was about to happen for her, but dude, it's just not been working. I've been finding a lot of, um, a lot of the things in the triple H era not been working the uh, Wyatt six being another one of them just i don't know it feels like there is there's certain attention paid to certain wrestlers and other ones it just kind of seems like they're kind of thrown like their their storylines are less important and unfortunately i think that jade's in the less important category for wwe bianca as a heel ooh, that'd be real good That'd be real good. Now, I know that Street Profits, I believe it was. By the way, I don't think Bianca's going heel. I think Bianca is uh, Lady John Cena for WWE. I think she's going to be the babyface for forever. She, I think she does too good at like her PR and public appearances and things of that nature. I think that she is she's going to be a babyface for quite a long time. Now, that could change next week, and I could be made you know a fool of, but that's just my feeling was or last year somebody said they wanted her to turn heel and she didn't want to but yes be heel bianca versus babyface Rhea at wrestlemania yeah the characters are good but the stories are lacking jade oh boy i'd be interested how bianca would change her presentation as a heel because she's not going to go out there flipping her hair doing the dance you know what i mean we've seen it a little bit before i mean we yeah we've seen it a little bit before but Mm. interesting interesting Uh, we'll have to see where that one goes Yep. Uh, we got, I think they'll announce Liv versus EO for Sunday night's or Saturday night's main event soon. I do think so. I do. Any news on Bandito and Hologram? Not Bandito, or not Hologram. Bandito has been backstage recently. Uh, our future Raw co host, Ibu, actually broke that news on uh, Twitter recently. And or Hologram's got new merch. Show. Hologram's got yes. new merch. Good for him. Finally. Do you know the relationship between Triple H and Carlito? I have no insight on that. I will say, I was incredibly impressed with the edit they put on the late edition of raw. They that. have some very talented editors. You would have had no idea. Yep. And honestly, for everybody that said like any number of things, the way that they edited it was 
way funnier than the line to just have Carlito standing there like <laughs> that. Yeah. Like in in all of them was way better than what they actually did. We got uh, Ray saying IWC over punk buck stuff. TK needs to act like a boss. Then he acts like a boss with Ricky and the IWC says not like that. So that is something that I have realized with them scaling the venues, them getting a new TV deal, ways that talent are handled. I, listen, I don't agree with a number of these things. I think they should have had their shit in order when CM Punk is there. Um, I think they should have been running smaller, more intimate venues well before. Uh, I think they should use talent that is under contract. But, dude, I will. This is my hill. I'm sorry. They don't need to go to smaller venues. You're filming a television show. Think about this. When you're filming a television show, there is action in front of the camera, and the behind the camera is the backstage stuff. Some of the stuff that you do not like, where the producers and the directors and the audio engineers stand. That's fine. As long as it fundamentally looks full on television, this is a television product. Now, I can understand if you want to do a smaller venue because you want to shoot different angles. Okay, fine, whatever. But here's the thing. Smaller arenas. Think about a basketball arena. You have seats A through like double C, right? So how many people is that? It's 26, 27, 28, right? 20, thir almost 30 rows of people. Or you could film in a smaller venue where they have seats like one through 10, like rows one through 10. You're only seeing the first couple of rows at that smaller arena. Like when you're shooting a hard cam shot, when you're shooting the hard cam's the one that's just faces the ring and you see a little bit of the crowd behind it uh, for those who are not in the know. If you only have like, if it's a smaller arena and there's only like seven rows, you're going to shoot it tighter because you're not going to shoot the ceiling. You're not going to film the ceiling. If you have the arena that goes up 30 rows, you can film at a more wide angle. You can make it look more full. I, I Look, AEW is going to be running Broadbent Arena here in Louisville, Kentucky in January. If you're in the area and you want to go, give me a shout. We're all, uh, me and the crew are going. Anyways, that has like five or six rows. Um, it's it's a complete like surround it's like a it's old hockey arena right so it's like four or five six rows up now i've been there to uh, and then they have uh, seats on the floor now i was there for a tna taping many many years ago it was fine there's not a bad seat in that place but like it's decidedly smaller it looks smaller on television and i'm not a fan of that i think you sell the sizzle you make it look like the arena has people in it the only reason that you know that the arena is not full is because disingenuous internet nerds take pictures and then they post lol attendance like i'm sorry stop getting upset about internet dorks smaller uh no more no more interesting yes yeah i i agree james more interesting is cool hammerstein is smaller but it looks cool give me some cool stuff dude uh that mall show gcw ran was cool i like that for a lot of people there's no win here jimmy like like they they're just going to complain no matter what. Oh, they, yeah. It's not an easy job. Being a wrestling promoter is not an easy job. And, you know, how, how long have I said that, that Tony, he's got such a full plate already with the soccer team and the football team and adding this to it. And you see the guy on the sidelines with the clipboard with a match lineup on it. It's, you know, he puts in a lot of hours, man. And it's oftentimes a thankless job. So uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't envy his position at all. It, it's difficult. He has made a lot of missteps. And like I said, this Ricky St Starks thing, for me, the only thing I kind of question is the timing of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's done a lot of positive things too, but you can't please everybody. That's just how it is. Even us with Fightful, you can't please yeah. everybody, Sean, you know? Uh, Jake says, happy 10th anniversary to the CM Punk appearance on Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling today. 10 yeah. years. I'm sure wow. that pod didn't lead to some damaging domino effects. So... Yeah, I, I, I'm a little bummed that it didn't blow up bigger because I, I've mentioned the algorithm before. We go live so much and have so many interviews, the algorithm doesn't favor us. Last year, I tried a video to try to correct that, and I was so proud of it. It's a timeline of CM Punk returning to WWE. Uh, our, our great editor, Rob Fee, helped produce that. And you can type in uh, timeline CM Punk WWE Fightful or something like that. And it is like... And uh, it's like a 40 minute video of how the Royal Rumble 2014 led to his return, 
to the ring at Royal Rumble 2024 about how he had that concussion and staph infection. The whole domino effect happened. The Colt Cabana podcast happened. The lawsuits happened. The return to AEW happened. Then people went at him over his disintegrating relationship with Colt Cabana and how it all developed. A 10-year unfolding went down. And you know what's interesting is today is my daughter's 10th birthday. And yeah. when I listen to that podcast in the delivery room, not the delivery room, in the uh, <laughs> in the hospital room while my wife was going through a very long labor. And so I will always remember that podcast because that's the day my daughter was born. <laughs> Honey, I know the birth of our daughter is, is here, but uh, CM Punk is also speaking for the first time since his WWE uh, firing. So push, baby, push. So how about that? That's funny. There you go. That's Just Mass says to follow up. I feel like Shinsuke should cheat, steal the title from Knight, then possibly do an extended feud to potentially uh, both benefit fixing their uh, credibility. How do you feel about that one? I mean, they got it. I don't know how they're yeah. going to do it. Big I don't marks. like Shinsuke. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe he's actually had a match yet. Since since uh, since he came back, he just it'll, jumped in LA night. It'll be tonight or Friday. Friday okay. he's having one. So that's what they need to do. You, you need to feed this guy people. It's the whole Ryback thing, right? With Punk. Feed yeah. this guy people, have him get some wins under his belt, give him some legitimacy, and then you have the match. You don't just do a few attacks and then you have your match because Shinsuke needs, he needs to be built. Ryan says this Ricky Stark situation is incredibly frustrating to me. It's petty to hold him off TV like they're doing. I dislike when a company holds talent that doesn't want to be there. Just let him go. If they were using him on TV, I would disagree with you, but they're not using him on TV and they're pulling him from Indies. So I'm like, what's, what's really going on here? Like, yeah. what's the issue? Why won't they use him? What, what do you what think is the reason that? is, Sean? I don't know. Cody's I friendship? Mean, listen, no. Like, I, I know there was one top AEW talent that took, said, so we say, like, I don't know, but then immediately throw away, you know, um, uh, Jimmy Jimmy Van here is throwing out an idea, and Sean says immediately, "No, that's not the case." Do you know, Sean? Do you do you know you're just not telling us what's going on here? Why were you at the Rumble? Yes, he said that. Why the yeah. fuck wouldn't wouldn't he be at the Rumble? That's one of his best friends. Like, yep. who cares? And I want to say cares? one thing on that because I I saw a lot of people online and even in the chat that were trying to use that as something against Ricky Starks. So oh, you should have been at the Royal Rumble. The only thing that I saw online regarding that was security surveillance footage with like a security I mean, camera. And you got to remember when Sasha. Mer yeah, dog. If you're also one of those fans who are like, you shouldn't go. You're a traitor. You're you need to take you're going to the wrestling reeducation camps. You're going to work the fields and you're going to plow the soil until you realize that you are a weird pro wrestling fan and we change your habits. I'm sorry. You will either love pro wrestling or you will love the minds. There is no other option. Mercedes Monet. I still call her Sasha Banks sometimes. When Mercedes had her, her first big match in AEW, who was there to support her? Bailey and Naomi. Exactly. Rhea and Ripley anybody have a problem with that? Rhea Ripley was backstage at AEW this summer. Right, like, for Buddy, right. And no one for, cares for, about that, right? No Deanna is at that. TNA all the time. Steve Macklin, I just interviewed him, was at AEW this weekend. Like, Right. Come on, man. And again, Stark, like, Starks wasn't doing any WWE productions with Cody. They just buddy, the security like, footage caught him. Do, do you camera. think Jimmy gave me sh when I rolled up to Busted Open's live show to say <laughs> hi to Dave LaGreca? He wasn't hitting me up like, you, you can't do that. Does <laughs> anything, AEW I'd be like, promote us, promote us. Does AEW start on Max next week? FTR tweet hinted it. Not that I'm aware of. It starts in January. Yeah. January. Uh, we've got. So they released even more Dominic merch today. Any update when Solo Live merch is coming? Yeah, listen, I dude, I just do not care about Dominic Mysterio. I'm sorry. I know he gets some reactions, but like, I just don't care. I don't care in the least bit about him. Ass, and I just keep telling, like, being told soon. I just don't know when soon is, and I keep pressing on it. So. What do yeah. you think of Dom being listed number one? I believe it was wrestlers under thirty. ESPN. Number one? Yeah. What'd you think of yeah. that? It was designed to get us to click on it and to talk about it. That's right. what I think of it. Right, right, yeah. right. Although 2024 has been a hell of a, of a year for him. He's had an amazing yeah. year. So good for him. And he's a workhorse yeah. too. 
Uh, let's get rid of that one. People saying TK is petty. Forget Triple H called Will Osprey lazy when he didn't sign, and Vince when he got moved from the Pepsi to Staples Center. So, yeah, when I see people that say, "Well, he's not equipped to be in this role because he's so petty," I'm like, guys, what are we talking about here? Like, do I do I agree with what he's doing? Not really, but I also understand that he's saying if somebody invokes or evokes my father's name, sorry, I'm not going to help them. Why would I? I get that, but like what we're talking about Vince McMahon who slapped papers out of reporters' hands and tried to fight people like that. Like, come on now. This is they come on. Jay Hudson says, at what point do we hold Tony Khan to the same accountability as Vince McMahon refusing to grant talent or releases to talent who want to leave? Uh wrestlers deserve freedom and pursue new opportunities. Why the double standard? Well, listen, we're talking about unique situations in every situation. With Ricky Starks, I think he should have been let go. I think if that's if they weren't going to use him, he's never Otherwise, requested his release though, has he? At least not publicly. No, he re- he requested they not pick up his option. Same thing happened with Josh uh, Alexander last year, and then TNA did. Mm-hmm. But if they have that contractual obligation, I mean, I think Diana also requested that of TNA, and they still did. Mm-hmm. So this is not a Tony Khan Vince McMahon thing. It happens all over the place. Uh, the same accountability. Well, it depends on every situation. If you're not being used on TV, completely agree. If it seems like a petty thing, sure. Mm. But also, like, what good are contracts if at any point a talent can just say, well, I want to go, and then they go? Like, what is the point of signing them to said contract if if they're doing that? So I am not. And this is one thing wrestling fans seem to forget is the concept of nuance and understand that all of these different happenings are slightly different all these instances are slightly different so what you need to do is realize that hey we take each one of them as they come for me i don't think anybody should be like held down to being at a certain spot but i understand this is an entertainment business and having these types of contracts does guarantee that someone will be there for a certain amount of time which allows you to write your shows and produce your content totally get that not lost on me But also, if you're just having someone sit on the shelf because they're going to go to the other place, let them go. Now, the Lucha Brothers, I feel like, you know, obviously this isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. If you look at the Lucha Brothers thing where they were negotiating contracts and stuff of that nature beforehand and kind of going around and telling everybody, oh, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing. Dude, you got to shut up. I'm sorry. Like, you have to be quiet. You can't be telling people that. And when you go around telling people that, don't be surprised when the boss does something against that. You need to be secretive. I'm sorry. Like, I understand. Well, I wish we could all just tell the truth. Yeah, but it's not the world we live in. Like, play the play the cards that are dealt to you in the game and the confines of which you're playing. Do not do that. Pretty simple. You guys would have been gone by now if you just shut up of the belief that everybody that asks for their release should be able to get it but if you are not going to use them and they want it then just let them go i agree and and especially now after everything that's come out with ricky over the last 24 hours and the whole you know scrapping them from gcw shows and everything after all of that if they're not going to put them on tv i would cut them loose 100 percent. yep Daniel Zambrano says, thanks for the great content. Sean, I feel like the Stephanie Vecker situation burned Tony, and he's worried about elevating someone and them using that to go over to WWE in the optics of him being a rube. Well, I mean, this Ricky situation started to unfold well before the Stephanie Vecker situation did. Uh, we had reported that, that likely whenever they, they do Forbidden Door again or Wrestle Dynasty, there will be like some provision saying like, Listen, you're going to have to agree to not pop up on WWE immediately if this happens or otherwise, sorry, we can't use you. I would be shocked if that didn't happen. But I mean, this Ricky situation, the Miro situation, Mm -hmm. these were all happening before that, Jimmy, the the Penta and Phoenix situations. Mm -hmm. Now I could definitely see where the Stephanie Vicker thing burned him a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely a case by case thing. Adrani is another one that comes to mind where, you know, wasn't he, weren't him and Sammy both told don't touch each other. And then Andrade went and attacked him immediately been, after. Immediately yeah, after. and he did it on purpose because he wanted out. They should have just cut him loose. Like in situations like that, cut these guys loose. I understand how Tony was reluctant about Punk because Punk was their biggest star. So I understand. But with all due respect to these other guys, they're not or they weren't. So I, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I agree with the notion that it comes off petty and spiteful. Um, but I also agree in the case of the GCW thing, why Tony hold those appearances. I see both sides of that, but if you're not going to use them, let them go. 
Daniel Zambrano says, been watching without paying for too long. So here's another one. Thank you so much, Daniel. Says, would have loved to see Buddy instead of Brody in the Continental Classic and someone new instead of Briscoe. I think Briscoe's is a redemption story, Daniel, to show that he went from, it was kind of sad how he explained it. And he said, the reason I'm losing so much is because I'm basically in my rookie year as a singles wrestler. I was like, damn, that's a good explanation. But I think it's to show his growth. I would, listen, I love Brody. I do, but I would have rather seen Buddy, especially after the reaction that he got at, full gear mm. uh I, I would have really liked to have seen that just ricardo says nxt heel bianca ruled she really did uh what's the scoop about grand slam australia okay bill we will talk about this right after we hear from our great partners at bet online hey guys I'm here oh to tell you about damn let's get talking about it the official uh, i'm not gonna yeah i'm not gonna put over betting sites sorry that was a very very bold in the business to bet on your favor in the business responsibly we had our 15th out of 15 underdog lock pick on fightfulselect.com the best five dollars a month or 54 dollars a year in the business uh we started our partnership with bet online in late december last year and since then we have given you 15 picks that we considered underdog lock picks and every single one of them hit this year wow. listen I'm I'm hoping to work with Bet Online into the future, but listen, man, if they don't re up us, I'm gonna get that money somehow. <laughs> I'm gonna get that money back somehow. <laughs> Bet Online, uh, check them out at Bet Online AG. The Australia Show, Jimmy. That was a very very bold attempt, anyway, to do a stadium that big. I couldn't believe it when they did it, yeah. especially considering, like, listen, WWE did a great crowd there, but if you look at the stadium. From the live shots, there were gigantic parts of it tarped off. Even WWE, as hot of a ticket as they are, couldn't do quite what they had anticipated. I didn't think there was any way AEW was doing a big stadium without a real foothold. Plus, Shaza lives there, so nobody or was born there. Nobody wants to go there. <laughs> uh, they moved to a much smaller 13,500 capacity, much, much better for them. Yeah, it, they definitely wanted to piggyback off the WWE show. There's no question because WWE still did like 50,000 uh, attendance for that show. I think it was Elimination Chamber. So uh, it, there's no doubt AEW was looking to try to keep up, you know, and 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 to show their international popularity. And it was it was uh, dog, and they're not like you're not that big. You're the number two company, and that's fine. You're not WWE. You're never you'll never be WWE. WWE and what you do, AEW or different things though they are both pro wrestling they are for drastically different audiences my friend uh not a great move for you them. can't do that kind of sure of, that having to switch 50K to smaller arenas major not, wrestling uh, dorks the kind of out there that Tony in wants. australia but it is what it is man get it is to what that it is. Spot. i've heard that uh it might be a max special have you heard that uh so when i first was getting the news about this it was hinted to me that it could be because max has the ability to do that but as far as running a pay-per-view and charging full price, they're like, ah, that doesn't necessarily work. I can tell you working with Anna Bauert for as many years as I did, that is the worst time zone to work with. Right. Like that. Like it, it is the worst that, that in Japan is pretty rough, but right. um, Ryan says, what are your thoughts on the online narrative that triple H is a racist booker? Do you think there are talent of color in WWE that feel similar? I don't feel that way. I, I don't feel that way whatsoever. Um, I'm not sure where that I, comes from. It's because they, they, they don't have uh, black champions. Because, black champions. Uh, I mean, a lot of people say because they don't have black singles wrestlers on PLEs and they did just have Carmelo Hayes. I just, I just don't agree with that. I understand there are things in Triple H's past, like the nation skit and the Booker T angle where people can easily draw that conclusion. But I really honestly feel like Triple H books people that he thinks are going to draw for him. I think and, that's the most important thing to him. And Hunter was the talent during the nation skit. It wasn't the booker. Yeah. But during I mean, him. listen, you, you can say I ain't doing this. Fair. That's fair. Well, yeah. I will say this, uh, and I'm not talking about the scrum. I'm talking about when Lashley did it. Bobby Lashley did another interview after leaving WWE. And I apologize. I don't remember what podcast it was, but he did an interview where he basically, he was really cool about, he said him and Hunter, he said he just wasn't a Hunter guy. 
right? Yeah. And I'm, par- I'm paraphrasing what Lashley said, but he basically <laughs> said, I was a Vince guy. I wasn't a Hunter guy. Didn't really know Hunter that well. And he seemed to have no ill will about the fact that when Hunter took over, Lashley wasn't really utilized to his full potential. He just wasn't a Hunter guy. And yeah. uh, and that's all I've ever thought about it. I never looked at it. Lashley, as one example, I never looked at it like, oh, he's not booking Lashley well because he's black. I never thought of it like that. I just thought Hunter's got his guys like Johnny Gargano is always going to get opportunity under Triple H. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it is, man. It's it's almost like a regular company where the old guard leaves, the new guard comes in, and they have their people. That's just... That's just how it is. We got a Humper Caesar, chat doing, Humperchats.com saying, <laughs> don't be hating on Portsmouth, Ohio, Sean. That's where I'm from. I just ordered your book from Amazon, Jimmy. Um, I truly loathe Portsmouth, Ohio. I hate to tell you this, friend, but I cannot stand that place. In fact, I remember when I wrestled there, uh, my fight team and I were doing like the MMA team gimmick because that's how everybody knew us. It's not something we could like hide. And the baby face took my mouth guard out and threw it in the crowd, and the referee goes, do you want your mouth guard back? And I just looked out there and said, no, nobody there has teeth anyway. <laughs> no, Nobody out nice. there has teeth anyway. Nice, nice. <laughs> New Lack City says, what are the C2 matches? I, I will say this. James in the chat saying there's a race aspect to the Triple H thing. Talk to me about it, James. You know more than I, dog. Uh... We... Uh, did do that show for a wonderful autism charity, uh, the Southern Aut- or Southern uh, Ohio uh, Autism Project that were wonderful to work with. So if you are from that area, and I assume they're still around, please uh, support them. They were they were incredible. Uh, New Lack City, our good friend, who I see over on Blue Sky all the time, says, "What are the C two matches you're most looking forward to? Who do you think should win? Happy holidays. Don't care me saying happy holidays offends anybody." Uh, I think Okada should win and will win. He is like the round robin tournament guy, and being a G one winner repeatedly, I think that's that's who should win. How about you, Jimmy? I agree on Okada, but I also think that it feels like AEW has really wanted to elevate Daniel Garcia. He's been the one guy yeah. since he resigned that it feels like AEW wants to make him a, a big star, and so I could see him getting the shine in the tournament as well. So uh, I see Garcia or Okada. I want to see Shelton Benjamin versus Kyle Fletcher very badly. Shelton and Benjamin, Kyle Fletcher is another one. He's another yes. one that, I mean, he just beat Will Ospreay clean, right? Yeah. So I, I would even put him in there. I'm so excited for the C2. I, I'm, I am so excited. The matchups are so good. I'm so glad Shelton Benjamin's in it, man. Shelton Benjamin and Okada. Are they on the same side? No, I think Shelton Benjamin's on the blue side, unfortunately. I think so. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. In there, but I put Garcia ahead of, ahead of him in terms of who AEW seems to be uh, looking at as a focal point. Jimmy, if you have to hit the bricks in a few moments, let me know because yeah, five we, do have, uh, we do have a bunch of super chats, humper chats. Matt says, Jimmy SRS, hope all is well with the benefit of picking up Ricky Stark's auction year or adding injury time if they aren't going to use him. Why not have those people uh, put people over on the way out instead of having them sit at home? Buddy, that is a question I have asked about 100,000 times. I don't have an answer to that. I think they should. It's exactly what I said earlier. Yeah, utilize yeah. them to elevate other people. Why not? Michael M. says, have you seen the loaded lineup and performers for WrestleCade this Okada's year? Okada's the blue uh, What's the match you're most So Shelton Benjamin, oh, we're getting for him, boys. WrestleCade. Listen, man, WrestleCade is a must-visit for me every year. Jimmy knows when he gets that expense bill. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I either make the six-hour drive or I uh, – make make the flight and then the drive there but they've got tna on friday i'm very excited for macklin versus josh alexander it was an incredible incredible match the first time around so i'm very excited for that one new like city says jimmy love the book just got it this week appreciate it why does gcw seem to have an issue with AEW? when to me it looks like AEW has been more than helpful with lending them their talent I don't think GCW has a problem with them. I think Effie just said something that uh, bit them. And I don't even think it's something he shouldn't have said. I- Here's the thing. I hope, honestly, like this can be, there can be a phone call between Effie and Tony Khan. And Effie could just say something to the extent of, dog, I was, I was hot. I was hot about it. And I said something. And you know what? That wasn't probably a cool thing to say. My bad. I just wanted to put that out there. And then Tony Khan could say, you know what? It's cool, dog. I get it. You know, we all get hot about things some from time to time and things come out. You know, let's 
let's bury the hatchet and then you know we can let Ricky come and wrestle with you all. I, I think that that would be great. Like just let's just honestly let's just put away the drama. I think that that's probably the better way. I would not have evoked his uh, Tony Khan's father's name if my if the company that primarily pays my bills, like for example. I am not going to go and say something about the father of someone who works for Nord or that mm-hmm. online. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do that. I mean, I also think that saying AEW, no buzz, no draw, when you utilize your talent, probably not something that you wanted to say and saying, you know, we- dog, I know that Jimmy's so right. It comes from like such a bad place, a bad faith place too. like, yeah, they got no buzz and no draw, but we'll take their wrestlers and use them and help bump our own. Um, We'll bump our own stuff. Oh, I thought they didn't have any draw. I didn't think they had any motion. But now you're telling me it's good enough for you all. You must have even less motion. Way to bury the promotion. He can't run on a $40 million. De- I mean, all of that stuff he that he shouldn't have said. But like I said, I don't think he pre-planned it. I think yeah. he was just he was just voicing his frustration about the Hammerstein ballroom thing. I think that's all it was. Need Tony to squabble up with Effie on pay-per-view. Who do I see in the final for the C2? I see Osprey and I see Okada. I think that's a matchup. Hell yeah. Update on ROH. Andrew thinks the TV deal is near. I think it's getting there. Uh, Andrew. TV deal for ROH. Andrew that Andrew has that insight on TV deals and execs. If you're not checking out Beyond the Bell every Tuesday morning on Fightful with Andrew and Rich, you're missing out, friends. Can you give me an idea of what a TV deal for Ring of Honor would look like? Like, are they getting paid money for Ring of Honor? If they could get guaranteed paid money, almost guaranteed money, anything. I don't know why a TV outlet would want to give you guaranteed money for Ring of Honor. I don't know if they if they could do a rev share deal like a split, I can understand that. But Ring of Honor has got no value yeah. right now, really, not a lot. Before we go, BL says, what is Jimmy's side on how he found and hired Sean? Did you interview him, meet him one-on-one prior to the hire? I found him through a Google search. I was looking for somebody that knew MMA and pro wrestling, somebody who had done podcasting. I narrowed it down to, I think, six people. Sean knows at least one of the names okay, that I talked to. Here. There is no chance that he's going to be able to get the votes. Okay. Or less chance, just because I'll never rule anything out. I'll give but- it zero. Because right, Tony's in a lose lose situation. Oh, okay. I thought they were done. Me on, forget this, $18,000 a year. That's what they said no to. And that's what made me go, okay, I'm looking elsewhere. So, man, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not going to say what Sean makes, but it's uh, <laughs> a little bit more than that. A little bit more. Should than be, that. It should be even more, honestly. Uh, Antonio says Tony's in a lose lose situation. If you book people to lose on their way out, people would complain he was bearing talent. Yeah, they right. would. They for sure would. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't worry about it. You don't worry about that. You just go. Right. People are going to complain either way, dog. The internet wrestling community is full of like the most disingenuous trolls imaginable. It's just what it is. Any any chances Vince comes back as Booker to WWE now that he'll probably receive a pardon? Um, I would say a 1% or less chance just because I'll never rule anything out. I'll give it zero. uh, Okay. Jimmy yeah. gives it zero. I give it less than 1% chance. Yeah. WWE is all too happy to um, be gone to you know, get rid of him. He doesn't have the voting they, power anymore. And I think sometimes people still don't understand this, but he doesn't have the voting yeah. power. There is no chance that he's going to be able to get the votes from the current board to have anything to do with that company. So no, it's not going to happen. Uh, do you think we will see uh, Cody or Chelsea at Survivor Series? Uh, Chelsea is supposed to be in town for that show. Um, I yeah, don't know and about and stuff. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, I know this because Deanna Perrazzo is headed there for a girls weekend. With That's Chelsea nice. Gray and Macklin That's nice. Me, That's so. nice. A to B Grand Slam Australia seems like a big marketing misstep. Who is to blame most for trying to run a stadium? A to B couldn't reasonably fill whoever's idea it was to run that stadium. Yep. That's who, I don't know who that person is, but whoever said, yep, let's do that. And then whoever said, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Cause there was no way it was going to happen. Nah, dog. Also the book starts with Tony Khan, man. He says, yeah, you're native things. He's the owner operator. So like the fact that he thought the numbers were there to substantiate a 50,000 seat arena in Australia shows that like now nah, dog, you're way off. And all due respect to AEW. I think they'll do great next year in Dallas. I just thought Australia. It's a weird one. Define great. I think they'll do 
over 50,000 okay. at, at AT&T Stadium. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I do. Uh, we got a couple more. I am crushed as updates on Eddie Kingston. There were some that were hoping that he would be backstage this weekend. I don't know if he was, but uh, and they were hoping he'd pop up at some indies because he, he was kind of local. But listen, man, he had a major knee injury. It was really bad, so he's probably going to miss several more months. He says, love Fightful, watch GPW. I love Deadlock Pro and what they do and their their environment, their community. Mm. He says, what do you think of the Death Rider angle? Love the idea. doesn't seem like they're standing on anything they said in the beginning. Well, the weirdest thing was seizing the Superstation. Then they didn't seize the Superstation. Yeah, that was, it was very it was just a promo. Uh, I think there needs to be a little more anti everything that stands for AEW. Um, I I feel like that segment did them a disservice. So far, it reminds me of WWE's take on WCW. That's what it yeah. reminds me so far, where they didn't have Goldberg and they didn't have Sting and they didn't have all these guys. Uh, and now you have uh, Moxley's group. They you know when they first came back, they had like mid card guys waiting for him backstage. It hasn't hit for me. It hasn't hit. I didn't really understand Jay White. He goes out there and technically he helps Moxley and then they lay him out anyway. Uh, I don't Jay White's got Jay White's got heat with Christian, dog. He's the reason that he actually has a loss on his record against Hangman. That's the beef there. Um, yeah, and then the BCC don't care. They're just going to take out anybody. I don't know. We'll, we'll see where it writers. goes. For, so far, it hasn't hit for me. And uh, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I mean, Darby Allen's not a threat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they need they need more. We'll see where it goes. I have to jet, Sean. So and, okay, so this is getting over. I think that this is like, so the ending of uh, the pay-per-view, to me, it feels like that this is the definitive moment that we're getting an upgrade in the people that, um, in the people that the, the writers are going to wrestle. The Mox, Mox's group. I'm, I'm purposely, you know, not saying the D word, right? <laughs> Anyways, I think that they, somebody also should have spoken to them and said, you know what, guys, uh, algorithmically, that's not going to work for me, brother. You got to change your name. Uh, anyways. Uh, I think that the, anyways, I think that the, amount of talent that they're wrestling. They were wrestling like the, I want to say like, we'll say I'll use Jim Cornette's word. We'll use the mascots, the heart and soul, the, the boys that have been at AEW so long that they just feel like their, their DNA is entrenched with AEW. Now we're getting the upper mid card guys. Now you're getting Jay White's going to be in this. Christian is circling around. Hangman is, and eventually you're going to get to your, absolute top of the card aka like the bucks and the elite are going to come back as baby faces like that's what's going to happen right I, that's what i feel i think that this is them showing okay well now the death or now the unalive riders are going to have to uh step up their game yeah and jay white's getting a push too everyone complained about that's the thing dude people complained about oh my god they're treating jay white so badly jay white up until like a couple weeks back is getting is constantly getting wins over the man who I believe is AEW's main character, which is Hangman Adam Page. You know, and I see a lot of people complain about this stuff and say, well, he should be doing more. He should be doing more. Yeah, dog. It's hard when he lives in another country and has visa issues and that can be challenging, right? So I, I think Jay, I think Jay is going to come out of this a lot better. Obviously, I don't think he's going to win the title. I think Moxley's going to hold the title until like Kenny Omega comes back, and eventually, like Kenny Omega will take the belt off of him, maybe. But we'll see. So enjoy the rest of your day, uh, and yeah. my American friends and Sean. Happy Thanksgiving. We got one more super chat. I'll boot Jimmy the hell off of here. Uh, and guys, please check out our sponsors and FightfulSelect.com. I'm going to have more news on the Hardy Boys contracts. They had not been signed prior to this week. We've got uh, a lot of details on that. We've got, gosh, what else do we have? I think we have Raw and SmackDown, or we have Raw backstage news coming to Fightful Select as well. Um, Bobby says, would you agree that the Young Bucks public perception suffered the most from the original brawl out? If so, why do you think it suffered more than the likes of Punk as it stands in the present day? Because I think a lot of the people that sided with Punk in that specific situation thought it perpetuated the idea that one, talent shouldn't be EVPs, that two, 
uh, AEW ran a sloppy shop, and three, that Punk stood on business, so to speak. And uh, it was, you know, the story is Punk and Ace Steel fighting like, what, two or three or four guys. So I think that that's, that's why. Um, the Young Bucks, I don't think, really lost any fans in that. Dog, yeah, the people who were complaining about the Young Bucks already disliked the Young Bucks. I'm sorry. You just did. I, it's just it's it's ridiculous that this discourse is still going on. The people who are going to ride for CM Punk are going to ride for CM Punk no matter what he does. I'm a big CM Punk guy. CM Punk's what brought me back to wrestling. But after watching, after you know seeing what happened in the brawl out video, I think CM Punk is in fact a literal punk. Like after a match, you go up, get into somebody's face, and then attack them. I don't care if Jungle Boy said do something about it. He started a fight at like CM Punk started a fight at work for a second time and people still side with him. And I'm sorry, but like I've been at working, I've been at, I've had jobs where like people have started fights at work and like they don't get to work there anymore. Like that's not that is a it's a psychotic thing to do. Like you're at your job, be professional. I don't like people are like, were you gonna let them say something to you? Yeah, dog. I don't care. What what do I what does CM Punk look like? Being 40 years old and fist fighting a 20 something year old at work. Dude, that's a dork ass thing to do. I don't care if you're running like if you're on a car lot. I don't care if you're an actor. Fighting your 20 year younger coworker is dork ass behavior, dude. I'm sorry. It is. Love CM Punk. He seems like a bad guy, though. People who were going Cry to dislike too. them already probably did. But the whole situation is a mess in general. Like, everybody should have been in a room talking about that, whether it be before, after, whatever. Yeah, they should Handled have, Handled poorly. Both things can be right. Colt Cabana, CM Punk, The Young Bucks, Hangman Page, Punk, A. Steel. Everybody should have been in a room, Tony Khan, talking about this and hashing it out. And that wasn't done. MASP says if Penta has a singles run in WWE, he could be a good addition to SmackDown's US title picture. Yes. That'd be cool. And you got to expect him to feud with Rey Mysterio. Like the most legendary lucha, arguably in American wrestling history, ever feuding with one of the more intimidating looking ones to ever hit American TV in Penta. And if you, if you haven't seen James, how right. Penta was booked, just don't hit in your early coworkers. Lucha Underground. Man, he was something special. He was something special. Guys, I am back tonight for uh, the post AEW show. Please send in your super. Boom. Make sure you're also following Sean Ross app. And hey, if you haven't yet, make sure that you're going to this channel and following here. Uh, this video has bad audio. Of course, it has like 2,000, almost uh, has 1,200 views, but it has bad audio. So sorry about that. Hopefully, this one doesn't have bad audio but anyways make sure that you are following here make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not um and that's gonna do it for our uh live stream today we did two three hours and 22 minutes i think that's pretty good zero dropped frames lots of interactions and good times had so i appreciate you guys hanging out while we were filming this today so you hate me you already follow. I already follow the beautiful channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You gotta walk around. To, I don't hate. You. you need ten more minutes. I can't, dog. I gotta get my dog out to the park before it rains here. It's gonna be ugly. I don't want my dog not being able to go play. So I'm gonna head on out. Remember, people, as always, your life is predetermined. Pro wrestling. No, I did. I did it wrong. Damn, dude, I messed up the catchphrase. I messed up the catchphrase. Remember, folks, pro wrestling is predetermined, and your life isn't. Go do something great today. If I don't talk to you before then, have a happy Thanksgiving. See you next time.